what's going on guys we're gonna look at the spy so i noticed a lot of you guys in discord played spy this morning um i'm gonna throw out some more levels to keep on watch for this week so one thing that i do kind of want to inform everyone um you know as a retail trader myself and you guys included um you know we kind of approach the stock market every day like obviously we know it's a bear market we know that the trend is down but you know we kind of just show up to the market thinking that every day is going to be the same um, but this week, especially, I need you guys to be a little bit more patient, wait for the bigger setups to happen just due to the fact that, you know, institutional traders, meaning, uh, you know, your prop firm traders, your, your banker traders, your hedge fund traders, um, even your big retail traders, meaning, you know, guys who are trading multi-million dollar accounts and they're trading these, you know, ETFs and high beta stocks, like, you know, Tesla and Nvidia and Microsoft and those type of traders, these guys are getting ready for the summer, guys. Uh, everyone knows that we've been in extreme pain pretty much this whole year, right? So we're running on five, almost six months now of you know when we started this sell-off. A lot of these people are stressed out. A lot of these people are tired. A lot of these people are like, you know what? I'm I'm taking off. I'm going to the Hamptons. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a trip. I'm taking the family uh, down to Florida. I'm doing this, that, and the other. If you don't believe me, you know. It's, you know, you have to look at the bigger picture, right? You know, and the only reason I say this is because, you know, one of the, one of the persons, uh, one of the people that I learned from, you know, many years ago now, um, still a good friend of mine today, kind of mentored me, um, you know, came from Wall Street, came from, you know, working uh, at a hedge fund to, you know, owning his own prop firm and then now just, you know, being just a, you know, a big money retail trader. But, you know, just from sitting around the round table and kind of talking with this person, you know, these guys who, you know, are six figure traders, seven figure traders, these guys, they don't need to catch every single move. They don't need to sit here in front of the computer screen and, and try to make money e each and every single day. These guys, you know, they come in, they take the best opportunities, they play heavy, they play big, they play fast, and then they play hard. So meaning that, you know, if they've been shorting the market, they're up right now, right? You know, if, if you're a realistic hedge fund institutional trader, you guys are up, you know, th those guys are not losing money because the stock market's going down. The only people who are really losing money are day traders always trying to, uh, you know, bounce these plays thinking that they're that we're at the bottom and they're trying to time the bottom and they're getting smacked holding, uh, you know, calls overnight and the market's fading the next day. And then it's obviously, uh, you know, the, the, the portfolios that are holding long accounts, right? So, you know, your long term investors, um, your long term hedge funds, you know, that are taking pools of money. And, and kind of making these investments, those people are down. Retail trader investors' uh, portfolio accounts are down. But your 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 uh, institutional trader, your hedge fund trader, these guys, you know, they're just like you and I. They're normal human beings. They're just playing with a bigger uh, a bigger bankroll. But these guys are getting they're taking off for the weekend, right? I mean, they're they're on vacation. They're gonna enjoy the three day weekend we have coming up, anyways. Why do you need to sit here and trade every single candlestick? If you've noticed yesterday and today, very, very choppy. Yes, we're getting some big intraday moves, but they're not following through, right? It's kind of chopping up and down. With that being said, let's get into the levels here on SPY. I see one level on SPY that we need to, to watch out for to the downside. That's 386.86. Just watch that level. Uh, as soon as that level cracks, you can see uh, that's today's lows. It's also going back here just a few days to the 19th. Also had those lows there. So if we do break that 386.86, we do have room to the downside. Get in, get profitable, get green, and get the hell out. You know, we're not trying to marry the stock. We're trying to get in for a good time, not a long time. Now, if we're looking to bounce and there is some kind of market reversal, just understand there's not a lot of market participants in the market this week. Volume will be a little bit lower meaning that you're not going to have that institutional algo money uh, coming in to kind of push with these moves. But if we even want to talk about, you know, a, uh, bouncing the SPY, the SPY needs to close over the daily five-day moving average. That price is sitting at around 391.71, 392, right? So if we get if we can close over 392, we've got room to the next supply zone at around 395. That'll present a little bit of a day trade opportunity to get long on the call side. Everything else in between that is just all noise. So just kind of sit back, be patient, wait for the 386, uh, 86 to the downside, or wait for the uh, reclaim of the five-day moving average, and we can think about getting long on some calls there. Other than that, everything else is just noise. Let's look at the one-hour time frame and kind of see how, how messy and choppy it is. 
you can see that 386 86 to the downside would be losing all levels of demand as well as these two prior wicks and then you can see we have nothing here right if you notice all of this chart here all of these lines these are all supply and demand zones do you want to be trading in this choppiness action you know probably not um, we want to be trading where there's open skies so where's the next open skies here on the spy over 393.62 does have room into 395, 396, and then obviously over 398 has open skies ahead. So those are the levels that you want to watch. Just like if you kind of notice this candlestick that's bouncing here, where did we bounce off of the lower Bollinger Band, which is also correlating with this uh, channel demand zone here? This has room to 391.20. It gets over 391.20, 391.92. I mean, especially if you're an options guy, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents, that's not enough room to make any money. You know, I'm not going to buy a call here because, you know, I'm looking at this green candle getting excited. There's no reason to have FOMO. You know, just kind of relax. This is not your money here anyways. You know, over over this price, it's going to give you 50 cents. I mean, unless you're playing 100 contracts large of the S&P, you know, you're really not going to make that much money, right? So why put your risk on the table? You know, maybe you got some room here over 392.50 uh, to 393.60. That's about a dollar room here might be able to play that uh, but your bigger level here is 393.59 over that area 393.60 then we have at least two and a half three dollars like this is where an options player wants to live maybe you want to scalp in here you want to stay away from this zone you want to stay away from this zone and then you want to you know the loss of 388.48 has room to 386 this is a scalp and then this is your macro flush i hope that kind of makes sense make sure you guys are subscribed to the discord um, join that Discord up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys all next time.